Hello guys and welcome to my design pattern series. Today I'm going to talk about the visitor design pattern. Before we dive into the code, let me just explain the motivation behind this pattern and uh, why it is so useful. Imagine you have uh, some kind of application that has different models, I don't know, at least two or three models, and for each uh, model uh, you want to apply a different strategy to do something uh, I don't know, and you have uh, like four strategies you want to apply and the strategy depends on the uh, model. For example, if you have uh, different kind of users in your application, guest user, regular user or a VIP user and you want to apply some kind of uh, action uh, or user perform some kind of action and you want to check whether the user has the, uh, the permissions to perform the action. Another example if, is if you are developing some kind of game which has different characters and besides the characters you have some kind of items which the characters can uh, have and if one character has uh, the item uh, A, I don't know, like uh, boots, okay? If uh, some character wears the boots, uh, the character gains more speed but if other characters wear the same boots, uh, it can fly. So depending on the character and the uh, item it has, the strategy, the, the thing that happens uh, is uh, different. Another kind of example is uh, an example which I'll uh, show code for is uh, for example if you you're developing some kind of uh, uh, purchasing app and you have different kinds of items you're selling uh, for example you have items that are uh, regular items which have price uh, items which have uh, which are gifts and uh, there are gifts only if uh, some user buys uh, enough items with a minimum price to buy and there are items which have uh, some kind of discount and after uh, the user collects uh, the items into the cart uh, you want to be able to show the user the total amount of the uh, the, the card, the, the price he should pay and the discount he, he, he got from buying all those items. First of all, let's uh, build our model. So we'll have a few items. We'll have the regular item, which will have a price. We'll have a gift item which will have a, I don't know the minimal price for gift and the original price original and we'll have the discount item which will have uh, the original original price and the discount okay so let's make it closer for it to fit the screen okay uh, and uh, what we want to do is to do two things. First of all, we'll want to implement the uh, calculate total price of items and we want to uh, calculate discount for the items. Now what are items? Items will be an array of uh, our items so for example it will be a regular item with price of 10 it will be a gift item with uh, the minimal price for gift which will be uh, I don't know 11 and the original price 3 and the discount item which will have the original price to be, uh, I don't know, 4 and the discount to be 2. Okay, so the total price of all those items will make it in, in a comment. So uh, 10 for the regular item uh, and discount item will be 4 minus 2 
which will be 12. Uh, so 10 plus 2 uh, is 12 and the gift item minimum price is 11 so we'll give it <coughs> we'll accept the gift item uh, as a gift so the price will be 12 and the total discount will be the discount of the discount item which is 2 and the uh, price the original price of the gift item which will, which is 3 so uh, the discount should be 12 so this is what we are expecting to get um, so let's implement it uh, first of all naively. Okay, what do I mean? Uh, simply by creating a function calculate discount. Cal let's calculate calculate total price, which accepts items and returns number. Okay, so let's make it a little bit more type safe. So let's create a type for item which can be regular item or the gift item or the discount item and the items will be an array of items sorry sorry okay an array of items and uh, the calculate discount will do the same thing let's first implement the calculate total price we'll create a Price should be a number, uh, and what we'll do we'll iterate over at the items, and for each item, what we'll do it's we'll gonna check the uh, type of the item, item instance of if it is a regular item, then the price is gonna be the item dot. Sorry items.price uh, else if the item instance of the discount item then the price is gonna be the item dot what's wrong here discount okay so we need to make them public public and here to public, public. Uh, so item dot original price minus item dot discount and we're gonna return the price and for the discount we're gonna do something uh, very similar we'll create discount which will be zero and for the items for for each item we're gonna check if it is a, a discount item discount item uh, we're gonna add to the discount that discount now for the gift item uh, we get the uh, discount only if the total price uh, is l more than the minimal price so what we want to do first of all is we're gonna calculate the price which will be calculate total price for the items and okay now f if the item instance instance of a gift item and the price is more than the item dot minimum price then the discount will be the item dot original price and after all this we want to return the discount uh, now I have an assumption here that the gift items uh, you only get them only 
uh, if you uh, pass the minimum price. For example, uh, here when I'm calculating the total price, uh, I'm not calculating the price of the gift item if I'm not uh, if I'm not reaching the minimum price. Uh, it means that you don't get the gift item if you're not uh, if if your total price uh, is uh, not enough. So your uh, gift items won't be uh, in any way affecting your total price. Now, uh, after uh, doing this, let's compile it. And uh, run it. Okay, and the uh, output is what I expected here. So let's just make it more clear. Price, discount, build it again, and run it again. No, sorry, run it again. Okay. And now the price and the discount is uh, as expected. What we can see here is that uh, all that in those two functions uh, we needed to uh, to create an uh, if else if statements uh, for the items we're having for the models we're having. It means that if we have uh, a lot of uh, models, like for example, if we have 10 models, if, uh, if it's uh, like a game with 10 characters or more, we'll have for each of the uh, functions we have, for, uh, we'll have an if, else if, else if, or, or in some cases a switch statement uh, with uh, every item, every model we're having. And uh, we can miss the, uh, the items, miss the models, uh, for example, if we are uh, creating a calculator total price with uh, 10 uh, uh, items, t 10 different items, uh, and we can simply forget one of the items. Uh, besides, the code will, uh, will look pretty messy, we'll have a huge uh, decision tree. For example, here the decision tree is uh, even more complex because uh, not only we are checking the type of the item, we're also checking some uh, uh, price, minimal price um, for uh, the uh, items. Now let's implement the same thing with uh, a visitor. So let's just rename those to be uh, calculate total price naive and calculate total discount naive. Okay, and let's close those for the second or so you can see. Now, first of all, what we need to do is create some uh, interface. We're using TypeScript, so we're creating an interface, or in C-Sharp it's the same. Uh, if you're using plain JavaScript, you don't need to do this, but let's do it uh, since we're doing it in TypeScript. So let's create an interface. Let's call it items visitor. And what it will have? It will have a visit method for uh, for each item, so it will receive uh, different items. Uh, for example, it will receive the regular item. Sorry, item, regular item, and the item uh, gift item, and the item uh, discounted. Okay, now. Uh, in C-Sharp it will be enough because of uh, how overloading works in C-Sharp but because of how uh, overloading is working in TypeScript uh, which means it should call the same method and inside the method you should do the if statement uh, let's make a little tweak in the visitor pattern uh, and just give different names so let's call it visit regular visit gift and call it visit discount the principle stays the same, uh, only we're giving different names. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an, a method, public, public accept, which receives a visitor, I visitor, items visitor, 
And what it does, it simply calls the visit for the item it knows it is. For, so for the regular item, I'll just gonna call uh, the visitor visit regular with, with this. For the gift item, I'm gonna call the visit gift. And for the discount, I'm gonna call visit discount. What I'm gonna do now is uh, simply implement two visitors, two strategies uh, to uh, use the items. So let's implement firstly the uh, price, the top class, total price visitor. It will, it will implement the items visitor. Okay, um, so by implementing the items visitor, it should have those three, three methods. They should be public. Okay, public, public, public. So let's implement that. So what I need to do, I need to firstly constructor, let's create a constructor. Uh, I need to have some kind of result of price. And when I'm initializing the class, I'm gonna create the price to be initialized with with zero. Now, uh, if I'm having a regular item, I should enlarge the price with the item price. If I'm uh, having a gift item, I shouldn't do anything. And if I'm having a discount item, I should enlarge the price with the item original price minus the item discount. Okay, uh, and now the function calculate total price with the items will be simply uh, creating the visitor new total price visitor and let's call it, let's create a function public calculate items item And what we're gonna do is items for each items dot sorry it is an array of items dot for each I'm simply gonna call the accept method with this. Okay, that's it. And now after Creating the visitor, I'm gonna return the visitor dot calculate for the items. What's wrong? Oh, calculate is a void, so I'm gonna sorry, I'm gonna calculate and return the visitor dot price, the property that has the price. Uh, using the same principle, okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the discount visitor which will have the price of the items and the discount remember we need to uh, have the price in order to calculate the discount for the gift items and we don't want to expose it private we want to initialize the discount to be zero as well so uh, the calculate is staying the same, which means we can have some base class for it, but let's keep it this way. Uh, for the regular item, we don't have a discount now. Uh, for the discount item, we have a, a, a discount, which is the discount, simply the discount of the item. And for the gift, we're gonna use the uh, 
statement the price, which we'll calculate in a second. If the price uh, is larger than the item minimum for gift, then the discount should be enlarged with the uh, original price. Now, what we need for this, we need the price, so we'll calculate it here. Price, uh, calculate total price for the items. Okay, so now let's see if we are having the same result with those. So price visitor, calculate price and calculate discount with discount visitor. What's wrong? Oh, we don't have the calculate discount yet. So let's create a function calculate discount, which receive the items. And what we have here is visitor visitor equal new discount visitor and visitor dot calculate and return visitor dot discount. So we need to calculate with the items and now we'll build it and run it run it again okay so uh, price visitor is 12 as the original price and the discount visitor is 5 as the original discount let's go over the code with the visitor and see what actually happened here so uh, let's go over the simpler one the uh, total price so what happened here we're creating the total price visitor, uh, which what, uh, what it does is uh, initializing the property price uh, to be zero. Now we're calling the calculate method of the visitor with uh, the items. Uh, and what it does, it uh, iterates the items and for each item, it calls the accept method of the item. The accept method of the item is uh, the implementation is depending on the type of the item. So for the regular item, uh, it calls the visit regular. For the gift item, it calls the visit gift on the visitor. And for the discount item, it calls the visit discount uh, on the visitor. Meaning, uh, without any if statements, without any uh, if else, if else, if else, or switch casing, we are splitting uh, the execution of the code depending on the type of the item to one of those uh, three methods the visit regular, visit gift or visit discount. Now for each of the uh, method the regular gift or the discount now we can have a simple logic uh, of updating the price, the total price depending on the type of the item. So for the regular item we are adding the item price for the gift item, we are not adding anything to the total price. And for the discount item, we are adding the uh, original price minus the discount for the total price. Now, after the calculate method uh, finishes, what we have here is the price in the price property of the visitor as a result of the uh, calculation. And what we are doing here is simply reading and returning it and logging the result of the function. Uh, the same thing uh, happens for the discount visitor with a simple uh, calculation of the total price at the beginning of the uh, accept method, uh, of the calculate method, I'm sorry. If you want to go over the code once more uh, on your own or even debug it to see what happens, you can do it by following the git repository link I uh, added in the description of the video. Now there are a couple of things you need to be aware of when uh, using the visitor design pattern, um, which is uh, when it is uh, actually really good and when it can be a little bit pain in the ass. Now, uh, it is really, really good when the uh, what changes a lot in your uh, application is not the models, uh, which means they stay uh, more, uh, more of the same, they don't change a lot, they aren't added or removed a lot, but what happens uh, a lot is uh, uh, addition or uh, removal of the 
strat strategies of handling with the models. For example, if you're uh, if you have uh, some kind of a game which has uh, fixed uh, characters, I don't know five or six characters for all the game, but the items are added uh, every month or with each uh, game update, you're adding a different item which should behave uh, differently for uh, each character. Uh, this is a good uh, place to use this design pattern because what you need to do when you're adding a new item is simply uh, adding a new visitor and uh, the code stays, uh, all the rest of the code stays the same. On the other side, if your application is actually uh, manipulating the models quite a lot, for example, let's take the same uh, game uh, example, if you're adding or removing uh, characters from the game uh, a lot, then using this pattern won't be as successful because uh, once you remove or add another uh, game character, or in this example, uh, another item, you need to update the items visitor interface here and go over all the existing uh, visitors you already implemented and implement uh, the uh, behavior for uh, that uh, specific item even though uh, maybe you don't really want to do it, maybe it shouldn't even consider that character, but if you're gonna do it anyway uh, it actually can help you if you're using some kind of a typed language, a static type language, for example TypeScript or c -sharp, uh, mainly because if you're manipulating the uh, items visitor, for example if you're adding a visit, uh, I don't know, visit number, uh, number, I don't know, let's fix. Now it uh, yells at you for all the visitors with compilers uh, telling you uh, they should all implement uh, the specific visit uh, method for the new item you added uh, and this way you can be sure you don't forget to implement specific behavior for a specific for the new item you're adding and uh, all of the strategies you're already having in your system but it can be a pain in the ass because uh, there can be a lot of uh, visitors and you need to go over uh, one by one uh, and again, if you don't need to <coughs> do anything, like in the total price for the gift item, uh, now it will be actually pain in the ass because you need to go over all the visitors and add a, a plain method that uh, doesn't do anything. Uh, moreover, if you're using uh, JavaScript, plain JavaScript without uh, types, uh, you can actually forget to uh, implement it in some visitors and you'll actually have some uh, errors at runtime. You have watched an episode about the visitor design pattern. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more design pattern videos by clicking over here or you can trust YouTube to know what you like and click the video that YouTube suggests for you here. If you want to watch more code related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you next time on Program Artist.